Hello YouTube, my name is Alex and today I'm going to share with you my testimony on uh, how I came to God and Christ 12 years ago, this is back in 1999 and I was not a church goer, I, was, I didn't even go to church and, and I, even though I go now, here and there, I have gone and well, let me tell you my testimony and you just take it as you will, you know and. Um, to me, it's not about that. It's about one thing. It's about seeking God to the point where you want to God revealed to you in all your heart. But not just that. It's one step before that. That's one part of it. But let's just start with the testimony. Uh, so 11 years ago, after a spree of just, you know, going to clubs with friends, drinking, smoking, just like... Living it up, you know, I was like 21, 22, 23, and right around the end of the 23rd year of my life, I kind of, 24th year, I kind of had been fed up with it, you know, I had a few experiences that kind of like had me question myself, like, you know, is this really what I want, you know, I could see darkness coming into my life, I could feel like, I could feel me changing actually into this kind of like, pleasure bunny you know basically a pleasure seeker and without this like debauchery i couldn't have fun and and uh, i came to a point where i decided you know what i've already i've already done enough damage in this body you know let me let me put it aside for a while so i stopped going out and i just spent more time at home it was my mom and i alone and she was pretty sick at the time you know she was sick all her life she had this rare disease where her arteries got thinner and uh, it was called Takayatsu disease that did eventually take her life but you know we'll get back to that later anyways so it was just me and my mom and I went to work I came home and so I stopped partying for like at least six months or so and I actually got more depressed because now I wasn't having that release anymore you know so, you know, I started smoking cigarettes again, I kind of went back to the marijuana again, and I kept it at that, I kept it at that, I didn't really go do any of the, the party drugs anymore, the rave drugs, I had enough with that, you know, a couple of uh, years before that, just like, I felt too much uh, pain come from those, uh, from, from, from that type of living into my life, like, I felt like stress all the time, anxiousness, anxiety, but putting it away for such a long time, for like six months, really kind of cleared my head But from, from that aspect of it all. But in a humanistic aspect, I still had like ambition, wants, money. I wanted money. I wanted to be like quote-unquote wise, knowledgeable. So I was reading a lot. And it was almost as if my happiness was contingent on these factors. And I came to the conclusion that that this is wrong, that why should I need certain things in order to be happy, why can't I just be happy, you know, I understand you gotta eat good, exercise and all that, but I was doing all that, but I still wasn't fully content, it was almost like there was this little bit in me that was always like hungry, insatiably kind of like searching for answers, and it was beyond like human happiness I was seeking at this point. So basically, I started reading. I started reading the New Testament, not the Old. I, I, someone told me in my life, I had a couple of Christian friends that I was moderately friends with. They kept stressing, well, it's the New Testament. That's the promise, they called it. And the Old Testament is the law and the commandments and stuff. So, you know, looking at it, the Old Testament was a thousand pages and the New Testament was 200 pages. So yeah, I think I'd read the New Testament, you know, uh, if God's going to come through, then let him come through with that. But the only thing I was asking for, I was asking God for this inner happiness. I was asking him for a new me, a new perception, I used to say. I need new eyes, I need new perception, an outlook. I, I told him, you know, yeah, granted, I partied, this and that, and, you know, but I felt like I had a need in me. That's why I did that, you know, like. Like, there's something wrong just from the beginning. Like, ever since I grew out of childhood, it was just this need to belong, this, like, I couldn't explain it. I just said, God, you know, I need a new self, you know, if that's possible. And 
you know, I actually asked for a few weeks without reading, nothing happened. So I figured, okay, you know what, let me read. Before I discount God altogether, let me give it a chance. Let me read the New Testament, it's only 200 pages long. Let's give it a go, you know. So I started reading, I started cutting out the cigarettes, I put everything, I remember I got a Ziploc, I put everything, my cigarettes, my lighter, the weed, everything, I zipped it up, put it on my shelf. And I, you know, I even disconnected my TV, shut off my computer, and I decided I'm going to go to work, come home, go for walks, and read, and ask, that's it. And I figured I would do this because Jesus said, follow me, he said. And if you want to receive me, you got to follow me, and he went to a desert for 40 days. I couldn't do that, you know, I had my mom to take care of, I had, you know, I couldn't go to the desert for 40 days fasting, that was crazy to me, you know, so, I figured I, at the least I can make my life simplified, I can cut out stimuli, because in the desert, I thought deep about this, I figured in the desert, there's no stimuli, so I gotta reduce stimuli, maybe, you know, I thought that's good enough, and I couldn't really fast, I had to go to work, I would fast on the weekends, like, from sun up to sun down, at night I would eat, you know, but, I cut out all the soda and everything. Not that that stuff is bad, but God doesn't want you to cut out the bad. He wants you not to do the bad. He fasting is when you take what you enjoy and you don't do it, you know, as a sacrifice, almost like, hey, you know what, God, I'm gonna not do this and I want this in return, you know, kind of a thing. But I didn't even know all that back then. I just, you know, fasted. Like I said, maybe one to two days a week on a weekend, like from morning to night. But that's not even the point. You don't even have to do that, but the important thing is I was asking God for two things. I was asking Him for the Holy Spirit, because I was asking Him for a new self until I read, ask for the Holy Spirit. So I started asking for the Holy Spirit. And I read, I also asked, it said, seek the kingdom of heaven. And so I was asking God at night, God, you know, please take me to heaven. I don't want to wake up in this world anymore. I'm sick and tired of it. You know, I can't imagine... 40 more, 50 more, 60 more years of this is like a prison sentence almost. Like I felt like I was in prison saying, get me out. You know, I came to my wit's end, especially that I cut out all the fun. Once the music, the TV, once everything stopped, I found myself kind of like getting over emotional about things and I didn't have a release. I did work out, though I did go work out a little bit, but I felt like you know, the simplicity was too much, almost like I was used to the chaos, and so I was a few times, few nights where tears came down, you know, uh, they, they hit, hit the Bible in there somewhere, and uh, I kept reading and asking and reading and asking, and I had set apart a certain amount of reading every day, you know, I was going to read the whole thing, and I set apart five to ten pages a day, I told myself, it's the minimum, so I held to that. And nothing happened. Nothing happened till about three weeks into it. In the book of Hebrews, which is near the end, uh, at the end, near near Revelations. And one of my buddies came over that I used to go partying with, smoking weed with, doing ecstasy with, uh, about a year before that. Like, it was my last time. And he came over, he called me, he said, do you want to go partying? I'm like, nah. And my other friend called, he goes, you want to go drinking? I go, nah. And it was at a time where I was about to give up. I was at the book of Hebrews. I looked up. I said, well, nothing's happening. God, are you there? I hope you're there, you know. I want this Holy Spirit. I want the living water. At this point, I was asking for the living water because it said the living water will burst forth from within and from your belly. And from the belly, to me, was an interesting thing Jesus said because I was really into Bruce Lee and the chi, the chi from the belly that they called it. This, you know, and Bruce Lee was into water, and anyway, so it caught my eye. So I'm asking for this living water, and I'm asking for the Holy Spirit, and I'm asking for heaven, actually. I'm going to bed every night now, imagining heaven. I'm closing my, whatever it might be like, I'm just, I'm hoping to be taken out of this world every night, okay? And uh, now when my friend came over, like three, three and a half weeks into this, and I'm in Hebrews, he came over, and he came over unannounced. And uh, he's like, well, you want to party? I'm like, no. He's like, well, he asked my mom if he could spend the night. She said yes. And so I couldn't really tell him to get out, even though I didn't want to. I wanted some solitude. I had been seeking solitude for a few weeks in my room after work. 
And uh, so yeah, we hung out, we played video games. He smoked some weed out on my balcony. I told him, you know, I'm done with that for now, you know. Like he saw it on my shelf in a Ziploc. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, you know, I'm not touching it for now. You know, I didn't tell him anything about what I was doing. Because in Matthew 6.6, 6, Jesus said, in secret, ask, you know, and in your room. Don't pray in the synagogue, which is church, in your room. So I kept it, you know, a secret. You know, we had some fun, whatever. He went to sleep. He crashed out on my bed. And uh, so I know I went and I, you know, I started asking for the Holy Spirit, the living water. And at this point I was reading on the ground. I would get face down on the ground. I would actually humble myself. Not at first. And then it said, he who lowers himself will be exalted. And I, so I figured, let me go low, you know. And I noticed that as I do bow and ask, there's a big difference in my spirit. Like, I felt humble. It's obviously humbling when you go down. So I did that in secret, you know, I went down, I used to actually imagine Jesus standing in front of me and just like, not that I believed in Jesus, it was like, I hoped that it was true, like a, you know, slight, like a hope, like a wish, you know, so that's all it was, mere hope, you know, and, uh, and I was reading the Bible, you know, like the New Testament and I had gotten to the end, I was persistent, it said you got to search persistently diligently and boldly and it said boldly you have to ask and give an example of the man asking for bread from another man uh, his friend and said he doesn't receive the bread at first but because of his boldness and his persistence he will get the bread and the last three nights of me asking before my friend came over I would drive to the Angels Crest National Forest which is the mountains and at night after work and I would just I would get a flashlight, I would read some of my Bible there after work, and that, those last three nights, I, this thought popped in my head, let me actually scream for this, nothing is happening, nothing has happened for 24 days, you know, like I came to a point where I was like, God, hello, Father, are you there, Jesus, you know, like, almost like a little smart ass, you yeah? know, but, uh, you know, I was like, if you are there, I want this living water. And I would like yell to the top of my lungs. It would feel liberating, but nothing happened, you know. But little did I know that God was there. And uh, that's why in Matthew, I think it says that the kingdom of heaven is taken by force. And violent people have been taking heaven by force and it's been advancing. Uh, forceful people have been advancing it. And like, even on the way back, nothing had happened all this time. And I was thinking, damn it, man. Ah! And I was like, one night I kind of hit my windshield. Yeah, I punched it, cut my hand, I had a Jeep, I cracked it. And I was like, damn, you know, like, kind of let out some stress. Stress of nothing happening, like frustration, you know? So now you cut to that night that my friend was over. You know, I woke up that next morning and I was positive. Like, I had my friend like this, about to hit him on the ground saying you put ecstasy in my water I know you did I mean I did it a year ago I know what it feels like and this is actually stronger maybe and turns out that night 10 hours 15 hours after we woke up he left and that feeling just grew a little you know it didn't get any lower and I had a dream of Jesus 50 feet tall or something in my dream walking down my street in a white robe releasing seven stars from his hand and that was the first of many dreams of him, and actually I had visions of him too. I don't talk about these visions. They're not dreams, they're awake. And uh, they also saw a few of them asleep. I might make some videos later, but they seem to dissuade people. People seem to say, oh, you must be nuts, or this or that. And you know, I wasn't even fasting or anything when I had, you know, all, most of them. Maybe one of them I was fasting, but the rest of them, no. And they did stop, it was only at the beginning. But the dreams haven't stopped. He pretty much, like, nightly talks to me. And he's in me, man. Jesus Christ, like it says at the end of John, Father, I pray that those that do believe, as I am in you, let them be in me. And let us all be one with one another. He says that many times, even in Revelations. He says, for those who overcome, I will come inside and dine with you and you with me. And that's literal, folks. Jesus Christ wants to be one with your spirit. He wants you to want him to be one with your spirit. He wants you to not ask for signs, but ask only for the Holy Spirit, only for the living water. Diligently read these 200 pages, and that's all it is, folks. So I pray to the Father right now that whoever hears this, consider to read the New Testament asking for the living water and Holy Spirit. 
to make Christ one with you. If you can't say you're one with God and Christ, that they live in you, I pray you find. Goodbye.